let's take a look at the orientation process. Onboarding ideally begins before the person's first day. On the first day, make sure colleagues know the new employee is starting and arrange for one or more of them to take the person to lunch. On subsequent days, the new employee should meet colleagues in their departments. After about two weeks, speak with the employee to identify any concerns. The length of the onboarding program depends on what you cover. Human Resources often performs the first part of orientation by explaining basic matters like working hours and benefits. Then the supervisor continues by explaining the department's organization, introducing the person to their new colleagues, familiarizing themselves with the workplace, and reducing first aid jitters. At a minimum, the orientation should provide information on employee benefits, personnel policies, safety measures and regulations, and a facilities tour and it's important to make sure new employees feel welcome and proud. Supervisors should be vigilant, follow up, and encourage new employees to engage in activities such as taking breaks with colleagues that will enable them to learn the ropes. Employers should assume that their employee handbook content is a legally binding commitment. Even apparently, sensible handbook policies can backfire without proper disclaimer. The handbook should include a disclaimer stating that nothing in the handbook should be taken as creating a binding contract between the employer and employees, and all employment is at will. Employers use technology to support this type of orientation.